What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about making your own Plex media server off of a NAS. So the idea is pretty much the same for all NAS brands, whether it's uh, QNAP, Synology, Asus Store, uh, probably TerraMaster. Most of them probably have something similar. Um, I know QNAP has an app center. Um, Asus Store has the app center, which is today what we're going to be working on. It's going to be the focus of today's video is working with Asus Store. But the idea will work across many different platforms. Uh, I don't know if they'll have app centers like the Acer Store, QNAP, I'm pretty sure Synology does. But there has to be some sort of way you can install it. So the idea will be pretty much the same whether you had to download from the app center or you just put the EXE on and install it from there. But today we're going to be setting up our own Plex media server. We're going to be making a share folder for our media. And we're going to set it all up so we can have our Plex server open up to our internal use and if you want to open up publicly. So let's get right into it. On a side note, yes, I got a haircut, so, you know, if you're a recurring viewer, you know, you watch some of my videos, you know, it used to be pretty wild, cut it all off, summertime is too much, so, it's enough of that, let's get right into the video. So, if you're curious about what NAS we're going to be using in the video, it is going to be the AS5402T. This is the NAS that we used previously in a video, and we did like an overview of it. This was something that Ace Store sent over to me so I can make some different projects with it, and we could, you know, see how it works. So I do appreciate Ace Store for sending this over. Uh, today it is our star of the video. As you can see down here, it does support Plex, and it does support Spotify, so I wonder if it says it can run it off of it, or it runs like some sort of a uh, cache server or something. But I do have to say I really enjoy this NAS. I really like everything it has to offer. What's really great, especially if you're gonna run this as a Plex server, it has four M.2 slots for NVMe SSDs. So that means that you could have, say you wanna do two terabytes in, two terabytes out. You could have two two terabytes or two one terabytes or however you wanna split it up of just cache storage for in and out, which is great when it comes to using your NAS as a Plex server. There's also the dual two and a half gig NICs on this, which is again, really nice. You have the redundant links and you probably, if you really want to, you could split this among two networks. So like if you run VLANs in your house and you want to keep your NAS VLAN over for one reason or whatever, you could probably do it that way too. But that's enough about the info. Let's get into actually doing the setup of Plex and everything else. So I logged into the NAS's webpage. Again, if you do have an Asus Store NAS, it's going to be the IP address, and then the port is going to be 8000. It's going to do the login, or if you need to do the initial setup, I'll have a card up in this corner uh, showing the overview, and I'll have in there, I show how to do a full setup of the Asus Store NAS. So it all works out from there. The first thing we're going to need to do to set up for the Plex server is we're going to come over to File Explorer, and we need to make a new shared folder. So you can see over here, I have some of my basic ones, but I'm gonna make a new one for Plex. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and create a new share folder. You can see it's the third icon in from the left and it actually says create new share folder. So now we're gonna come over and we're gonna click add. We're gonna call it Plex. And then we're going to hit next. Actually, I'm gonna turn off only accessible. I don't want that. You can leave it a recycle bin if you want there too. I'm gonna to leave it. I'm going to do read write for all users. So, so I'm going to set it for read write for all users because there might be different computers that are going to be using this. So I'm going to set it that way. I'm also going to come over here for anonymous and I'm going to give it read write. Now the reason I'm going to be doing this is because this is a host internal to my network. For me, it's not going to be opened up to the public. If you're going to open this up to the public, like you're going to port forward for the Plex server to go outbound, you probably want to leave this as deny. If somebody does get through your Plex port and hit the NAS, they could get anonymous access over SMB, FTP, and any of these other services to write to it. So, of course, you could do firewall rules, and it also has Windows ACLs you could do. But if you have this, if you're going to open your Plex up to the public to share with your friends and family, you want to keep this on deny most likely. But me, I'm going to leave this on read and write because it's going to be internal to my network. I'm not going to open it publicly. We'll click next. You could also do um, extra protection. You could do encrypt it, and you could also do uh, the worm write protection on here. I'm not, I'm just gonna leave it blank. I'm gonna click next, and then I'm gonna click finish. Now you can see over here, I have my share folder. So if you did notice, it actually opened up a new window in access control. But if we come back over here to File Explorer, you see I have my Plex window. So I'm just gonna close this out really quick. So these two apps really control the main file structure. So of course, File Explorer is gonna have where you can go in, you can click on a folder and see the files in there. You know, you can see over here, there's a test file I put in here. But the only thing you can't do in here is delete a file. So 
you might be clicking around trying to get rid of it, go through settings, there's no way to delete a shared folder in here. That's where you have to come over to access control. It's a little strange, but that's how the permissions are set up in this. So you can come over to share folders and then in here, if you want to remove it, that's how you would remove it. Again, it's a little bit uh, counterintuitive, but that's okay. It works out. So now we have our share folder for Plex. So now in here, we can make a couple other folders. So I'm gonna make TV shows. And then I'm gonna make a movies folder. And if you didn't catch it, the second icon over here is create folder. And it also will say create regular folder. Well, create folder. You don't wanna make another share folder because you want it to be inside the Plex shared folder. So now if I open up, Let's see how if I whack whack to this, let's see, I should be able to get this in file explorer and I'll drag this over. And now you can see here's my Plex folder and then here's movies and TV shows. So now that's all set up. You can see this is off my windows machine and I'm able to go through windows file explorer and hit the share. So I'm just going to put a couple things in there just so we have it when we set up Plex and then we're going to continue with the Plex install. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do to install Plex is we're going to come over to, uh, here it is. So the next thing we're going to do is come over to App Central, and this is how we're going to be able to install Plex. So App Central is pretty much the app store for the Acer Store NAS. So there is a ton of different apps. These are just the top ones, but if you come over here, they have all apps. So, I mean, you have stuff from Amazon, you have AdGuard, you have AirSonic. A lot of the stuff that you've probably seen through the videos I've done with Docker, you could do through the NAS, which is really nice. And I'm looking at it and they have all the, the apps as default. So you could really just make it simpler for yourself instead of doing it through Docker and you could do it right through the Asus Store App Store. So, I mean, they have everything. They have all the stuff for Plex. They have Jacket. They, I saw it before. They had Couch Potato. They have a lot of stuff in here and this could really be a nice way to do it. And you have an all-in-one box. Like here's Ambi. So you can really go through here, you can run your Pi-hole server over here. Again, there's Plex. You can look through here and you can find all the stuff you need. They have Sab NZBD, um, Sonar, Radar, they have all the R's, uh, Tatuli, they have a lot of the good stuff you're gonna need. I actually do this for my Plex server is my QNAP, I have everything running off of that. QNAP unfortunately doesn't have this great support with all these extra apps, so I do run it through Docker still, but I run everything off of my NAS, so it, is directly connected to the shares and it's much simpler in the long run so i don't have another machine working to organize my media and make the watch list and everything else and it also helps in the fact that the networking for the qnap nas was a little tricky they didn't want to easily link up so that was that but we're going to come over here and we're going to use plex media server so i'm just going to click on this now i was reading through the description before and they're actually going to give you a plex pass trial for 30 days so it gives you a deal in there. So if you want to have it and you have the Asus Store NAS, you can give it a shot. I'm going to click install. And it's going to start going through. So we're going to start. It's going to tell me the requirements. I'm not going to port forward, but you're going to need to port forward if you want the NAS to work out to the public. This is going to be so your friends and family can have a direct connection back to the server. So I'm going to click install. We're going to let this work and I'll be right back. See when it's installed, it's going to have installed, and then we should be able to close that over here. Now you can see we have our Plex Media Server app over here. So I'm going to click to open that up, and it's going to redirect and open up a new page. So it does that because it, it's running off the NAS, but it needs to open up a new tab on your computer to run. So we're going to sign in, or you're going to create an account if it's your first time using Plex. And now we're going to set this up to go through. So I'm going to go here and we're going to select what I want to call it. So I'm just going to keep the name default. If you want to change the name of your Plex server, you can. I'm going to uncheck this because I don't want access outside of my house. If you do, you want to share with your friends and family, keep this checked. Click next. Okay, so here's the fun part is now adding the library. So remember those two share folders that we made over here in File Explorer? These are going to be what we're going to use now. So I'm going to come back over to the Plex tab. And we're going to add a library. So I want to add a movies library and I'm going to keep it movies and we're going to keep it in English. I'm going to click next. So now we're going to add it so it links back to the actual shared folder for Plex and the movie folder inside of there. So I'm going to browse for media. I'm going to come over here and click Plex and then I'm going to click movies. I'm going to click add and now the shared folder is linked up. 
We also can come over here and I could add TV shows. That would be the same thing. I'm going to click Plex and then TV shows. Of course, if you have other media on here, you know, you have videos or music or photos, it's the same idea. You add them the same way and you would just make more shared folders. Sorry, you would make more folders inside this Plex share folder or whatever you called your share folder. So that's that for that. So that's all I need for these two. So I have my movies and my TV shows. Now I'm going to click next. You could add more Plex apps if you want, but I'm not going to. So we're like done. So after that, it's going to bring you over to Plex. And if you look down here on the left, I actually have those two shares for the new server I just added. So if I come over to TV shows, there's nothing in that folder, which is okay. But if we come over to movies, here's Ted. And Ted was one of those movies that we use the DVD rip method to get onto our Plex server. So we have it over here and it's now in our Plex server and I could open it up and I could click play if I want, but I'm not going to because I don't want any kind of copyright issues. But uh, yeah, we come over here, it shows you a library of categories. And now this is Plex completely running off of the NAS. If you look up here, here's the port. Um, here's the IP, sorry. And it's using that same IP as the NAS. So simple media server completely running off of your NAS. It's a one box solution. Everything you need is in there. And again, we're using the Asus Store NAS for this. Right, so that was that. That's how you set up your own media server completely off of a NAS. Again, we use an Asus Store NAS for this. I want to thank them again for sending this over. And I'll have links below to the store page below. And all the other information for all the stuff I use, the M.2 drives, the two and a half inch drives, all the gear I use in my lab will have Amazon links below. It'd be great because then you could use those M.2 drives in your new NAS that supports four of them. Just an idea. But... This would be how you make your own media server. It's super simple and it all runs off of one box. And I think this box uses like 30 watts at max. So you have a low power server running your media server. And you could also have a file server running off of this too. And your Docker containers. All in all, I think this is a great option, especially if you're looking for a home media solution. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, it helps the channel grow. And I will see you in the next video.